Welcome to Time to Teach with Tammy, the podcast that gives tips, advice, and suggestions to teachers by your real teacher. So sit back and enjoy, and oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. back and I'm super excited. Um, one of my guests is turning the microphone because she's so excited to speak <laughs> directly into it. But today we have two fantastic guests. We have our, our literacy coach. We have a third grade teacher who is also the grade level leader for her grade. So woohoo. Um, Lisa Clark and Becky Strong. I'm going to let them go ahead and introduce themselves. So Lisa, let's start with you. <laughs> she was she was hoping to go first. Uh, I was that. hoping to go first. I'm yeah. so lucky. Yeah, you're Thank so Thank you lucky. for choosing me. You're welcome. Uh, Lisa Clark, I'm from Canada. I've been international teaching for almost all of my 20 years of teaching. Wow. Now, where else have you been? Uh, I know, but the audience 11 doesn't. years here in Guadalajara, off and on. And I've been in Guatemala. Oh. And I've been in the United Arab Emirates. Nice. So you've been all on over. both sides of the world. Both sides <laughs> of the world. That's that's how we do it. Um, <laughs> now you teach <laughs> you teach third grade. I do. And you are the grade level leader. I am. For how long have you been the grade level leader in, in third grade? Uh, probably I can't in remember. total, probably about eight of the eleven years. Oh, okay, eight of the eleven years. As well, okay. Um, thank you for coming on my show. Mm-hmm. Thank I you really for do. asking me. Yes, of course. Don't worry, I'll ask you again. So that <laughs> we, we can share this excitement again. And um, Becky, why don't you go ahead and, and introduce yourself. All right. Um, <laughs> I've been here in Guadalajara for eight years. Five of them I was a second grade teacher. And then this is my third year as the literacy coach. Woohoo! Yeah. And we appreciate all that you do. Thanks. Nice fuzzy dress, yes. Yeah. Um, so you were also the grade level leader of your grade level. Yes, but just for a short, maybe a year or two. Okay. Before yeah. I came. Back. But I'm just kind of noticing pattern. You all have a shared experience. <laughs> yes. Yes. So um, thank you so much. And basically, how long did it take us, ladies, to get this thing going? Well, didn't how we read this article back in before, before school, school started? <laughs> And this is the end of week eight. Yeah. So yeah, it was about like uh, two months. yeah, two months basically. So it's uh, gonna be really good. It's gonna be awesome. We actually had this interview planned for two months, but it just never happened for whatever reason. Many Sicknesses, non swimmers, odd things. Um, so it's happening today. We are very excited. Mm-hmm. Um, woohoo! So let's get this party started. Okay, so we're actually going to be discussing um, an article, How to Create Non-Readers by Alfie Kahn. And this was actually brought up in one of our meetings many, many years ago. Just kidding, but like two months ago. (laughs) Two months ago. And we were discussing how to get students... To buy into reading. buy into reading. Yeah, we were having a discussion about reading logs and like what do we do as teachers and all that fun stuff. So when we had that discussion, someone, Lisa, I think it was no, you. it was Amy. Amy. Fine, whatever, it's been two months. <laughs> <laughs> it was Amy, right. I just happened to find the article That's and right. send it, it was to you. Amy. But it was Amy who brought the article to our <laughs> attention. <laughs> That's right, okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so I Amy, take credit. you can't. But you can take credit for actually sending it out to everyone because of okay. that. You did that, so. I did that. 
Thank you for that. Okay, so um, yeah, so Miss Amy, our fantastic math coach, You've already interviewed. who I've already interviewed, so the audience already knows her <laughs> if they've listened to it. <laughs> if you didn't assume. go back, go back and listen to that episode. Assume, it was great. Assume positive intention. Yes. Ex- okay, <laughs> they've all listened to it then. Okay, so um, she brought up the article and just kind of talked about this fantastic article from Elfie Khan and things that we can do to really get kids to buy in to reading. So we're just going to kind of discuss this article and then just kind of discuss what we do in our own everyday lives to help our kiddos. So let's take a look at how to create non-readers. Reflections reflections on motivation, learning, and sharing power. Okay, so number one says quantify their reading assignments. Nothing contributes to a student's interest in and proficiency at reading more than the opportunity to read books that he or she has chosen. Yes, okay, so that um, basically... But it says not to tell them how many pages or for how long. Yeah, and I think this kind of goes back to our whole discussion of reading logs because yeah, totally. some teachers give reading logs that are based on like minutes, some are pages. Parents sign it. Parents sign it. Parents lie about their Parents actual reading. Lie about it. I think a lot of it is um, it, it stops it, right? So if you have a limit on something, they're going to do whatever the least possible work is to get to that limit and then the timer goes off they complete the page numbers and then they're done and that's it makes it like a chore like an asset more of an assignment instead of reading for the love of reading and going and going until you get to a good stopping spot or something like that yeah like they're they're kind of um limited based on whatever that expectation is i kind of feel like I have experienced this also in like writing. You know, if you give them like um, certain kind of sentence frames and certain like write this much, it can limit them. Like right. students who actually might be capable of writing more, they're like, oh, I did the fave and I did this mm-hmm. and that's all I do. And then they're actually limited. So I kind of feel like it's very similar. And we've experienced that. You were about to say something and I cut you off with this that. whole what article. No offense, Alfie, but <laughs> I, I think it's. At our grade levels, yeah, pre first, second, and third, I think they don't have most kids don't have the intrinsic motivation to read. They're just starting to read something more than yeah. picture books, and so I do give them, you know, I, I, I encourage them to read an hour a week. That's what our school goes for yeah. in third grade, and. The kids who already have gotten that intrinsic motivation have started loving reading. They are going beyond that goal. But the kids who don't are trying to meet that goal. Not all of them do, but they know that that's where they're trying to get to. So he talks about the whole motivation thing and how giving them a limit stops them from being motivated. But I think at this age... They, they don't have that. intrinsic motivation, most of them. I don't know. I feel like I can I can definitely picture some kids that I know are, are they love reading. Some of them, yeah. And they're most. good readers, but I've talked to their parents, and when they put the timer on for 20 minutes, they will read to that 20 minutes and then get to go play their video games or go, you know, play and do something that they... So maybe they should so, stop putting the timer on. Well, and then, but that's the thing <laughs> yeah. is that when we give them times, like, you need to read, we need, we want your child to read for 20 minutes, they, they do things like that, trying to make sure they get to that spot. Well, and I think that's why we went from saying 20 minutes mm-hmm. every night to, to having the whole reading entire... Reading an hour sometime this yeah. week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. and just to clarify that for the audience, so we kind of change so that they have the entire week, so it's not Monday to Friday, but it includes the weekend, so they have seven days. And they can break it down however they want. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't have to be a certain, um, you know, like every day a certain amount. It's getting your those minutes in or whatever it is during the week. I- I'm glad we have some somewhat differing um, <laughs> opinions here because I think it's going to make for a great episode, people. Just kidding. <laughs> They're now boxing. No, just kidding. Um, okay, so I actually, I, I like that you have some disagreements because I really like a lot of what Alfie Khan has to say. I don't agree with everything and I don't even mean necessarily with this. He, ha- you know, his other, if you're familiar with his work, his whole like 
what is it punished by rewards or whatever and i've talked about this on my show and i know you ladies are so such faithful listeners so you already listened to it just kidding they don't they didn't know i had a podcast until today i'm just kidding i just kidding i always like to do things like that but no um i have mentioned how i give like starbucks out to my kids and i think you know there are people who say you should not do like kids should just do things just to do it and i agree that's great in theory but as a classroom teacher i have felt like you know giving starbucks is helpful yeah. for my students and things like that um going off of that the one part that he does talk about incentives that was kind of interesting was um um he says when we when we try to when we offer them rewards it's mm-hmm. kind of like we're bribing them right and yeah. so that's, he says that we're sending the message that reading is something that somebody wouldn't want to do yeah. because, and that's why we're giving rewards, because it's not any fun, so we have to bribe you to do it. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting, and I do... I don't necessarily <laughs> agree, though. Yeah, and that's I great. I love that. Do <laughs> like, you agree I, with it? I don't know. I just find it interesting. It's like, interesting. Yeah. About that. I, I like, think at high school level or even middle school level, by by the time they've gotten through our elementary where we're trying to reward them and teach them that, that reading is good and reading is fun and, and we need to reward them at our level. Yeah. But I think by the time they get there, it should start to be intrinsic. Yeah, it's and hopefully it would be intrinsic. Level. And especially in this culture where reading isn't really something they do. And that's the other thing I think, which is especially difficult for us specifically, because um, the culture is not a reading culture. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're trying to instill this love of reading and we want it to be intrinsic, but we're also fighting against what is the culture and that is a non-reading culture, yeah. pretty much. As a lot of cultures are. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like fighting against that. So I think I find myself ca- kind of conflicted as well because another thing is when we give like our eager readers, which audience is something else that we give to our students if they're, for whatever reasons, they moved up a level and Raz Kids, which is a program that we use, they can read online or other various reasons they demonstrated responsible reading habits during reading workshop, whatever teacher decides for. Um, And then they put their eager reader in a box and then two eager readers are pulled at the end of every month and they get a new book. That's kind of like a reward too. And I- Of course it's a reward. It is a reward. And I find that also very- Motivates the kids to get their name in. Yeah. At this level, they want extrinsic motivation. Yeah. They just, it's not- coming and then I've got kids I set on um, Bibliognasium Becky introduced me to Bibliognasium mm-hmm. I remember years ago that and so up. I've set them up and I know it's another form of a reading log mm-hmm. yeah but they log in their minutes and I've given them a, a goal for the bimester and this this bimester the first bimester goal was an hour a week and I asked at the beginning if there's some kids who wanted a bigger goal and about half the class wanted a bigger goal did they get there some of them did, some of them didn't, but they all beat their one hour a week goal. Mm. But that was, so everyone those are the was ones that to. didn't need such an, an yeah. extrinsic motivator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the rest of the kids, Need they a needed a little bit push. of intrinsic. They get rewarded every week if they've read their one hour a week. I don't think that's well, a bad thing. And then I guess the next question is though, does that create a love of reading though. I guess if they're reading the good books. And now, I think that brings us to the the part in here where it says kids have to choose what they're reading. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, that was another one. Right. They have to they have to have choice in their reading. And I think I've, that's something we do a really good job at this school. I think that's yeah. something we've really worked at yeah. to to teach kids how to choose good books and to know just right. Yeah, and good fit. Yeah. And and I think that they have a lot of choice. We've got tons of great books in our classroom libraries in our Whole school library, and so I think that's something that we've really done a good job at. I was yeah. a reader as a kid, and now I don't but believe that. Yeah. Just no, kidding. I Just never kidding. read. I never have my nose in my book. I don't know. You know how? But as a little kid, I remember about fourth grade. It became something like insatiable. I'd always have a book, you know, mm-hmm. where where when I shouldn't have been having books. Um, but in sixth grade, my teacher gave us a book list, and we had to read the books off the book list and do book reports. And I never read because I was already a reader. Yeah. And 
I, well, I'm probably still read. I, I remember never reading his books. I'd go and read the back cover and, and try to write my book report yeah. on that. But I didn't want to read his books. So you mean... I didn't get choice. You were motivated by not having choices and by having to, to do a book report on that? Yeah. Oh, I'm so surprised. And that's kidding. one of the other ones that he talks about, right? I, yeah. I having might to have, do a I might have liked to report on something I chose. Yeah. You know, I'd like to share that with people, like a book talk or something. Mm-hmm. I would like to share that and tell about this great book I just read or about this horrible book I just read. But one that right. you actually but chose. But something I had to choose. Yeah. Not something that was saying, here, this is good for sixth grade readers. Yeah. And I feel like, I, I think things are changing. And like you say, Becky, at our school, it is, students have so much choice and we're, you know, doing balanced literacy and we're beefing up our classroom libraries. But I definitely know in the States, I haven't been there in a while, so hopefully things are <laughs> none changing. Of <laughs> yeah, none, of, none of us have. But I just remember like your classic of everyone reads the same thing. And yeah, it's I like, that too. that's great if, if someone happens to like that book, but then it's, it's just, I don't know, I guess it is adding some choices to that. I think probably if we... You know, like some things maybe could be assigned, but if we're adding additional choices on top of it, I think that's, you know, like that can only increase kids' own, you know, love if they're actually getting to choose. Because I was a reader like you too. I was also a writer. I was writing books. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Becky's shaking her head. I was a reader and a writer. I was a published author, just kidding. Just bought a blank journal and wrote a book in it. So, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So, yeah, I was one of those kids. Like, I didn't need... I was already motivated to do it, but... um, I think a lot more kids are than we think. Yeah. I think that we, we do some of these things because we think... Like we like the one about making them write reports. That's one of the things yeah. that kills readers. And we think that we should do something like that so they can prove that they read their hour or prove that they yeah. finished this many books or whatever. And so we mm-hmm. think that we're doing good things, but really we're little by little killing that love yes. that they they could have continued to grow. I don't know that any of us think book reports are a good thing. I think we're <laughs> well, doing like, a basic. Do we, but why do we do it then? I There's think so it's so always been done to. To prove to that prove. they read it. To test the kids. To catch the kids. Yeah, I hate that. Right? <laughs> well, so do I. I, yeah, it's so, I, I have to tell you, like, Lydia, my daughter, she's not me. <laughs> um, so, so um, yeah, so she, she doesn't just pick up a book because she's picking up a book. But she's had experiences where she like would have to do a book report and it was like you have to find like 10 words you have to define those 10 words and I'm like could you make this any more painful than like there you can't get any more painful just like it just I would love for Lydia to be the kind of person who loves reading and will pick up a book because she wants to but um, these experiences are not helping to create that love right it's like really I mean just p- very painful it just makes the whole thing <sighs> I would not want to read if I had to do that I would not well it's like our, our adult b- book clubs are in sure. right mm-hmm. yeah if I ha- have to read something that I don't have any interest in I, I won't read it or even if yeah. Yeah. even yeah. if I get to talk about it at the book club yeah and, just and drink wine it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I just won't do it if it's not true. something that interests me I'm not going to read it and yeah. imagine if you had to do like a diorama to bring to the book club <laughs> like, or a post you better get on to prove that, that you read it like, like how horrible would that be I would never go to book club <laughs> even right? if I like the book me I might, either I might read the oh, book I might, I might I do a poster but I'd like to draw <laughs> but I imagine that every month to have to do every book that you finish to have to do some big thing to prove that yeah it. it's just not even authentic of no. what we do in our real lives exactly. right? we're reading we're not creating something at the end usually I think that's such typically. a big thing to think about like to kind of ask yourself as a teacher when you're when you are you know setting up things in your classroom like do real readers do this and yeah. if the answer is no then maybe think twice about making students do it because yeah. Real readers don't actually do those things. Yes, is it gonna? Is it? Does it mimic our authentic world and things that we authentically do? And if not, maybe we should 
I keep a list of yeah. books I read on, on Goodreads. Totally. Which yeah. Is something that good readers do. Yeah. yeah, I am doing that now. Um, I spent a period trying to input everything I could remember that I ever read. <laughs> and now I'm just trying to keep up with it. Yes. Yeah. That is kind what of What are you exciting. reading right now? I actually, I, we just started a new book in book club, not the physical one. I'm now in an online one because you she doesn't like know. us. I love you guys, but you know my bedtime is 8.30. Where's yeah, my cursor? Yeah, book club is too late. <laughs> Your book club is well, too to, late. Come to the school one then. Wait, when is that? Well, Six. this time we're meeting oh, at afternoon. Thursday. What? At afternoon. Next week, you have one week to read. But you might have read it already, La Lacuna. The La Lacuna. The La Lacuna. La Lacuna. King, King no, King. I don't think I have Mother Night. That's what I'm Barbara. reading. Barbara. Just start Barbara Kingfisher King. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, okay, so book club is here now. Well, one book club is here. Send me the info. I feel like I probably. I'll, I'll get you on the list. Get me on the list. I'll be there like the other book club. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, if your if your bedtime is eight thirty. Uh, you to basically you don't have a personal life. You can fit in the book club. Okay, yeah, this one would work for you. Okay, that we're usually done discussing good. the book by eight thirty. Mm-hmm. But I am in an online book club. Are you proud of that? Yeah, I five. I can't do that stuff. The online stuff. Like, yeah. Online classes to each don't excite me either. No. That's why there's choice from, in all book clubs. That's why right. <laughs> there's choice. Yeah, things is back to the arts. <laughs> um, choice. Can, can we also go back to the whole? Um, reading log? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested in thoughts, opinions. You know... (laughs) You know... You know, I used to teach fourth grade here. And I used to make them do a reading log twice a week. Maybe three times a week. No, twice a week. And they had to write about... They had to reflect on what they read. And... Some kids loved it. And some kids hated it but it did make them become better writers too <laughs> so, so they wrote I know there was a little bit of uh, well tell us about your how what I would how give them writing thing? prompts oh okay. like they had a list of you know 20 25 writing prompts and they had to pick two or three and they just had to reflect on what they read that day okay like based on what I taught and stuff and in, in the class stuff reading lessons but some of the kids really liked it. They really got deep thinking coming out of it. Nice. And some of the kids, well, those are the ones that weren't really reading and pretending, and I'd always catch them. But I, I also noticed you. that their writing got better over the year. And so getting rid well, of the getting rid of the the reading log was really hard for me <laughs> because I did see better writers coming yeah. through. And I saw kids reflecting on their reading, which I don't know that they do on their own. So you, we, treat, we try to teach that in class, yeah, but I yeah. don't know that they actually would do that on their own at this level. So currently then your grade level is not using reading logs? No, they just keep track on Bibliothesium. Oh, okay. In okay. my class, I don't know what the other teachers are doing. Okay. Uh, and I had kind of an opposite experience. I'd given up reading logs... A couple years well, ago, yeah, right? a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and I, I, yeah, but you, you have pre-first kids. Don't they matter. They need to read. Well, yeah. no, but I mean, the reading logs at my level was they were writing pages of. of yeah, stuff, right? yeah, yeah, right. There, so their reading logs look different. Um, and gosh, I can't even remember what my reading log looked like initially, but I was very happy to get rid of it because I did not feel that. <sighs> It was always honest or even always helpful. Mm. I'm sure for some parents, too, because like what you're saying at, at pre-first level, it's more like the parents are keeping track of these things. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of just what happens. Um, so maybe for some parents, it was a nice visual to remember. Oh, yeah, that's what, what they're supposed to be doing. But I just didn't. I, I don't know. I just wasn't convinced that reading logs were the way to go. So we got rid of it. Mm-hmm. And then we started having discussions of reading logs. Um, well, really, it's been a couple of years mm-hmm. now, I guess. Right. And um, just trying to get like on board and uniform, at least grade level wise. And much to my dismay my grade level really liked the idea of reading logs so I did return to reading logs and um <laughs> I know oh, uh, I know hey I'm telling you it's really difficult when you're trying to be uniform mm-hmm. 
And it, so you're trying to stay on the same page, but then when something is like, how do you balance not being difficult mm -hmm. and, Well, there's you know, some things you should have the autonomy to do in your classroom. Yeah, and I'm sure I could say, I'm just not going to do that. But of our reading log now is more like a graph. So they just color in, like the parents have to keep track of the minutes and they just color in how many minutes and it's the 50 minutes for seven days. But hey, I send it out on Monday and sometimes I get uh, reading logs returned on Tuesday that's been filled out for the entire week. <laughs> so there you go for honesty. But do I really care? I really don't care because I don't care about that paper. Sure. Um, it's really just trying to get the idea to the parents and the students that reading should be happening. So I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, that's the, the biggest to thing. buy in. Yes, well, exactly. We have I, to get them to buy in. I think with the parents too, even what you were saying before about like not letting them the kids see the timer or something but it, it i think it depends how the parents do it like if they're sitting their kids down and saying you have to read for this many minutes and mm -hmm. here goes the timer that yeah. ruins everything exactly whereas if they're just kind of on the sly mm -hmm. like noticing exactly. what time it starts and then noticing what time they finish and writing down those minutes yeah like, it's a very natural like you know time they spend together that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, and then they're, the the students are probably enjoying it, and they're going to be spending much more time, yeah. really, uh, reading their books. And I have found, since we have been doing a workshop, and I love workshop, mm -hmm. the kids just, they really do love their books. And I mm -hmm. love the way, like in our grade level, they, they're they not necessarily readers initially. They right. become readers and prefers. So right. it's like, how do you get a student to love reading when they're not even reading? <laughs> so, so um, but they can actually begin to love reading because it's all that they're engaging right, with the books. Sure. They're reading the pictures and then they learn how they can act out their books and it becomes a very play-like which is super appropriate for their age and they love it and then they just they go home and they want to read I mean they right, really exactly. do I've had so many parents talk about how their kids just like oh they just want to read and check out these books and um, can you recommend books because they're trying to get enough books in the house that the kids yeah. can be engaged in and I just feel like before workshop I didn't necessarily see that and I probably also as a reading teacher wasn't the best <laughs> reading teacher I feel like I've learned a lot um, as a reading teacher just through workshop but um, like now they're they're they just sincerely want to be reading at home mm -hmm. even prior to actually being readers. And so I feel like, you know, I just feel like we have to really try to get, like you say, buy-in with parents and students. So, ladies, how do we do that? I don't know. It's hard to hard to get the buy-in of parents who don't read. Well, what are some of the things we've done, <laughs> maybe grade level or school level? I think, I think our... our Family day last year. When we had the family yeah, the family night. reading night. Yeah. I think kind of got some good stuff out there. Like yeah, we had different sessions and stuff. And mm -hmm. can we describe we that for our night. audience and just kind of talk about what we did on family reading night? We invited all the families in from elementary, and each classroom or grade level came up with three or four different activities. Um, one of one of ours was Reader's Theater. One of ours Ooh, in third nice. grade was... Um, like, ask a teacher. Yeah, questions to sit down and talk to teachers about about this. How do we get my kid involved? Yeah, yeah. Um, and one of them was, like, oh, creating was these little cootie catcher things for questioning after they read and talking about books with each other. And I mean... And some rooms were just, like, super comfy reading, reading yeah, rooms. Comfy they reading had, room. like, lamps, All the bean bags, bean bags, and bags and yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, and I'm trying to remember, what do we do? On you guys November? have been re doing reading night for a long time. Yeah, we have been, but we kind of changed it up a little bit to fit this format, yeah. which I actually really liked because I like involving everyone. I feel like it should be embraced yeah, by, by the whole community. Yeah, exactly. Not just, I mean, you're really trying to get students and families of all ages to buy in. Um, I'm, I don't remember what I, oh, I think I did the tic-tac-toe um, sight words tic-tac-toe uh, 
I think that's what I did in my room, and I want to say somebody else had like a point though. Um, ah, uh, yes, make the the pointer power pointer with power. the uh, mm-hmm. what's that popsicle stick thing? Mm-hmm. Um, someone had the dice that you throw, and it has a different question. So you use you read a book, and then you toss the, the and die and, and answer it was the cool questions. because like uh, older sibling would be playing that game with their pre first brother yeah. and sister with their mom and it was a really just cool atmosphere yeah it was, it was a really nice atmosphere yeah it was, it nice was. yeah it was and then they all kind of get involved we did it in March we did it late. Did I think it late. you're right. I think we should do it earlier. I think we you know, talked about... So we have about, the whole year to use these activities at home. I think one of our grade level leader meetings earlier this year, we did say we wanted to do it earlier. Did we say as early as November? Because I'm feeling like, you guys, <laughs> it's October pressure. 6th. <laughs> <laughs> we probably should plan for that if that's going to happen soon. We probably should have a meeting. Yeah, we probably Yay. should discuss that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that will be happening again. But yeah, I feel like... The family reading night um, is a good way to get buy-in. I feel like, um, like just specifically talking to parents because sometimes I think they just don't, they just don't know. Yeah, they don't know what to do. They don't know necessarily the benefits of reading, and they don't know how to engage in reading with their child. So I think just having like explicitly those those conversations are very helpful. I did an um, after school book club. I didn't do it last year and I haven't done it this year. Um, but I took uh, the scholastic book order and picked one that I thought was good. I picked, picked two one that was a lower, one that was higher. And I'd pick oh, them first. and I'd send it home to parents. And the parents who were interested in it would, would buy the book or well, rent the book from the library. And then I'd give the, you know, would, would meet whoever bought the book, would meet and would say, okay, you read for 20 minutes tonight, let me know how many pages you read. And then we'd figure out kind of an average of how long it would take us. And then I'd get one of the parents to uh, invite us to their house for lunch. <laughs> well, we'd, that's and, a nice And we'd bonus. go to their, uh, how, one of the parents' houses for lunch, and we would talk about our book and while well, we ate lunch and feel all grown up. Hey, I would do that just for the food. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'm someone who likes to <laughs> eat people. I should do that again this year. Yeah, I I yeah. think that is awesome. After school book club. Um that's really brave of you. I, I like that. I think you can do it even book clubs during the day too. You can, you know? but it's not near as fun. No. But they, <laughs> but they still can. love it. Yeah. They still love it. Like that yeah. whole idea of of uh, reading can be social and you can yeah. talk about it. I have kids, I did book clubs with some kids in second grade last year and when I saw them in third grade in the beginning of this year, the first thing they asked me when I came to their classroom was, are you going to do book clubs with us again this year? Because oh. they, they just loved the, yeah, the, camaraderie, was, yeah, the camaraderie and the social aspect. Mm-hmm. Well, that's probably a different setup than the animal research book club. I'm guessing. <laughs> well, yeah. well, sir, because Becky helped me set up a book club. It's part of the whole workshop thing. But it was funny. I was so scared to do this, like, <laughs> researching book club. And um, Becky helped me, like, model it and launch it and get it going. But the funny thing was, like, it was the highlight of the year, they I loved feel it. like. They yeah. loved it. Yeah. It was such a different way because they do a partnership. So they're used to, you know, they self-read and then they read with a partner and it's yeah. usually a partnership of two or three. Um, but the, these larger book clubs kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> but they really loved like being in a group yeah. and reading something and discussing it as a group. So I know what you're saying is, is like something kind of different, mm-hmm. but... Um, yeah, it just got me to think how great I thought that was. Doesn't happen until the end of the school year. So. <laughs> yeah. Another cool way to get kids excited about reading and, you know, do a reading at home but not try to be catching them on if they did it or not is yeah. having more um, book talks in the classroom where yeah. they're maybe not assigned or anything, but every once in a while or once a, di- once a week or something, you have kids that share books that they're reading and kind of give a little summary but not give the book away. So, and kind of, you know, you model how to do it, but it gets them to talk about what they've read, like real readers do, and it gets other kids interested in the books that they're reading mm-hmm. so they can have kind of natural conversations once they know who's read books they've read as well. And that and, could probably yeah. be done in a partnership or even a small totally. group too, mm-hmm. because obviously if you're, I mean, I do, I am not against 
students talking to the whole class, but when we're talking about trying to get m- more, more students mm-hmm. involved. Uh, but yeah, I feel like that's nice too because then everyone gets to participate. Mm-hmm. So that's... And they can be short. They don't have to yeah. be like a big book report type thing, you know, but just and very like... Um, if, if somebody's interested, it's not like an assigned, okay, it's your turn to do a book yeah. talk. Like, it can be very natural. Or just in small groups. Okay, everybody's, we're talking about character in class. Totally. Let's talk mm-hmm. about the, the character traits of the book, the person in your book you're reading. Right? No, that's such a good way. Whatever yeah. you're doing mm-hmm. in your classroom, talk, thinking about the book that you read at home this yeah. week, like bringing those, having those connections to what you're doing in the class, yeah. to what they're doing at home, totally. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. I like it a lot. I like it. <laughs> Basically. A lock and a lock. Um, I was going to mention last year, I think it was, that I did. I only have three minutes left, and then I have to go pick up my children. You're not allowed to leave. Just, let, just let your students deal with themselves. Come on, they're in third grade already. They <laughs> they got this, Miss Lisa. I could probably be a little late. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead and leave in three minutes. We can wrap it up, and if you have I to I do have an out. age. She can bring them up to class for snack. <laughs> I will let you go. Um, yeah, so last year we did, like, I had um, parents email pictures of them reading. Me with too. Kids. Yeah, I and loved did, like, it. I yeah, loved seeing them, did. like, in the Yeah, and it was cute. Corners. We did, like, a bulletin board, but just to see everyone, like, in their home and reading. Their and just, natural habitat. Yeah, their natural, <laughs> seeing kids in their habitat. That's a fun one for, like, over Thanksgiving break. Yeah. Like, when they're going to be gone oh, yeah. to kind of promote reading even on vacation like yeah they'll, they'll get picked you'll get pictures from really cool places if they're doing yeah. it while they're that's at Christmas a break great idea yeah. that's a really good take idea. a book like on that. vacation yeah, yeah. Reading on the where'd you take your book yeah my family <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, but they're not allowed to take their library books, or are they? Are they? Oh, I think they can. I don't lose them. If you lose yeah, it, you pay for it. I think you're right. They don't. Yeah. I think it's the, I'm thinking summer, they turn it in. I think we let sense. them take our, yeah. the yeah. ones that we've signed out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we might get in trouble with, for that. Okay. Um, you need to leave, don't you? You got two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Okay, One well, minute. Sorry, well, let, changed. Well, let's um, finish this up. So I guess... I mean, basically, that pretty much sums up what we, what some of the article. I mean, we didn't get Have through all of it. Have we come to any conclusions? Have we? Reading right? logs, what? bad, choice, choice, good. I let students choose why where they not? sit. <laughs> yeah, I like do. that. Sitting choices. Even if you're going to do a reading log, like you have to, like you could even give them choice of how they're going to do it. I mean, if a kid really likes Bibliomaniacum, awesome. If they'd yeah. rather just write it Yeah, out that's paper, nice. The, the way they, thing. yeah, I that's like true. that. The or way. if you want to do a diorama. Yeah, if you yeah. want to do Oh my God, I would, I would have to. girls this year that want to do dioramas. <laughs> yeah, you probably would dioramas have some students everywhere. who would choose that. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess that pretty much sums it up. We solved all yeah. the world's problems today, so... As, as we should. <laughs> as we should, exactly. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm sorry that it took eight weeks for us to make it happen, but I'm it glad that it near happened. as scary as I thought it was going to be. No, see, it was bad, bad, right? Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. And now it's time for our student segment. We have a friend to tell us all about how we do reading in the classroom. Okay, so um, for today, our student segment, I have a very nice volunteer, <laughs> our little friend, um, N. I'm calling you N because I don't usually say first names on my show. Is that okay? <laughs> okay, so you know, that's I'm talking to you. Um, okay, so listen in on my show. We've been talking about um, reading and how we can um we teachers can help teach reading in the classroom and i thought maybe you could talk to the audience and tell them like when we do a reading workshop what how do we do it what does it look like what are some of the things you do can you tell the audience and you can go ahead and come up here close to the microphone like you can do like read all the time try to read the word you know or or try to read the words. I I like that, right? So I a couple of things that you said, read the whole entire time. That's something that we work really hard at for everything, right? Everything we do, it's the whole entire time. And then you also brought up a really good point about read the words that you know. 
Um, you can read pictures too, right? Because we we might not know all of the words. And then can you tell the audience about, you guys have a very special place where you keep your books. Can you tell them about where you where you keep your books? You keep your books and your book box. Yeah, and then where does your book box stay during the day? The book boxes stay. I stay with the other book box. Yeah, it stays with the other book boxes. Yeah, and they're all kind of like we have this long shelf in the back. We have like one of our walls, uh, the upper half is just windows, which is really nice. And there's a shelf and it stays on there. So all the book boxes are there. So then when it's time to do reading workshops, you go and you get your book box and then what do you do? And I start to read. What do you just read there at your book box? What do you do? Uh, I, I find a good space to sit and uh, read. Ah, uh, can you tell our audience what is a good, how would you know what is a good space to sit and read? How do you know? Because your seat like there is there is like so much people reading and one play and you want to and you stay there and you can read it's kind of sad and you can read and I can, and you can this this is so much I need to have a better place to sit and read Mm -hmm. and you go to another place to find. Yeah, that's a good point because if you're sitting right next to someone, you might get distracted, right? So I like what you said about, oh, I know this isn't going to work. I'm going to find a better place to sit where I won't be so distracted and I can really grow my reading brain. I think that is fantastic. And um, I, uh, since we're talking about finding a good place to sit, how, can you tell us, how does that make you feel as a reader? Do you like to be able to choose your own place to sit? How does that feel when you have the choice to choose your own place? Because it's your bus and you know the bus and the other one. Like, tell you, you sit there because I'm sitting here. No, you sit whatever you want. Yeah. Do you like that? Do you like to have the choice? Yes. Does that does that make you enjoy your reading even more, do you think? Yes. Yeah. Where, where are some of the places in the classroom where you like to sit? I like to sit in my desk or in the carpet. I like to sit there. Yeah, those are some nice places. Sometimes I see students doing self-reading under their desk. That's fun too. Yeah. Have you ever read under your desk? Yes. Yes? <laughs> Do you like reading under your desk? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, now the other thing we've been talking about reading is how students get to choose their books. Do you get to choose your books in your book box? Um, yes. Can you tell us about that? How does that work? When we switch out our books, maybe tell the audience how does that work. So when it's a, when it's time to switch out our books, what do we do? Tell the audience. First, first you you put the books. Every book has a number, and you put in the box that have that number. Oh, that's so important, right? You don't just put your book anywhere, right? It has a special sticker with a number, and you put it back in in that basket. That's great. And then what do you do after you've done that? Um, after you done that. That the teacher said like how many books you can choose and and there is like every table is like a, 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 a box like a name like Fly Guy Mowilan and now the table there is a box a book so that actor. Yeah, and then you get to choose them. So you go around and you kind of shop for your books. And then um, after you have your books, do you switch out your books every day? No, only the day you can switch your books. Yeah, and why is that, Ann? Why, why, do you, why do we read the same books? Why do we do that? You read the same books to... to See your fa your first time you read that book, 
and you read there again, you can say, oh, I, I know a little bit more. I, I can read a little bit more, and again you read I can read more, and again and again, and you can read it all the book. Ah, that's a good point, yeah. So we know that we reread our books, we read them again, because every time we do that, we learn a little bit more, don't we? Hey, you learned a special trick about all about the world books, right? Yeah. About how to hold your learning. Can you share that tip with the audience? What was that little thing? You learned a little trick when you're reading an all about the world book. You can do something that's going to hold your learning so you don't forget what you learned. What is that? Something with your post-it. Do you remember? With your sticky notes, something you do? Uh, you remember the things you can you can see in the book and read? You remember that? And you get the, a sticky note and you and you write. You make the picture or you write a little bit. Uh, and then what do you do with a sticky note after you do your picture and maybe add a few words? What do you do with that sticky note? And you put in your book oh. and stay there. Oh, okay. What you, and what you not remember, you just kind of say, oh, I remember that because there is a sticky note. Uh -huh, exactly. So, yeah, that's true, right? So we said all about the world books. We just, boy, we learn so much and we don't always remember everything. So we make those special little sticky notes and then when we look at them we're like, oh yeah, that's what I remembered. And then we remember. Do you ever share that learning with your partner? The sticky notes? Yeah. Do you ever share your sticky notes with your partner? Do you tell your partner about what you learned? No, the sticky note, what I was with the partner, he always wanted to wrap a book over there with we read and we read it. Ah, and then you read that book. Excellent. Okay, well, and I think that's pretty much what we wanted to talk about on today's show. I want to say thank you so much for coming on. Actually, just audience, you know, in volunteer, didn't you? You said, I'd like to be on your show. We were having a conversation about Miss Tammy's show, huh? Yes. Yeah, even tried to show you the internet page and we were blocked, so I couldn't. But um, thank you so much, my dear, for coming on here. And we've got reading workshop going on in the background. So you know what, I'm gonna let you go back and what are you doing this rotation? What are you working on, self-reading or partner reading? Partner reading. Okay, I'm gonna let you go off and do that, okay, hon? Thank you, my dear. So there you have it, a little bit about their experience during reading workshop and our friend's thoughts on it. And that's going to wrap up today's episode, episode 22, Fostering a Love of Reading with Becky and Lisa. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Before you go, don't forget you can catch our show notes online at www.timetoteach.libsyn. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. We're also on Facebook at Time to Teach. Don't forget to check out our Facebook group, Teachers for Effective Curriculum. And if you're an educator with your own podcast show, I invite you to join our brand new Facebook group, Teachers Who Podcast. Let's grow a community where we can network, problem solve, and discuss anything and everything podcast related. I'll see you there.